Good evening friends, followers and channel members. Happy Tuesday. Hope you've all had a good week so far. Feels like an age since we've been back here. Um, Friday, I think our last stream, wasn't it? Friday, so I've been away all weekend and busy day yesterday. So, starting a little bit later than normal as well tonight, so thank you for uh, for holding off if you were expecting our usual Tuesday night stream. It is here, and it is a little bit later than planned, but we've got a great flight for you this evening as we take our uh, EasyJet aircraft on another real-world flight. This is from Nice to Rome, and what's quite exciting about this, of course, is that uh, recently released is the new airport scenery for Rome, so looking forward to seeing that. We're obviously flying on live time, live weather. When we do get to Rome, though, and we've touched down safely, hopefully, then we'll um, we'll we'll bring the sun up and have a look at the uh, and have a look at the scenery. But we'll do the flight uh, in the evening, as per. Um, as per usual. So, welcome on board everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, this Tuesday evening. Our flight time today is around about one hour. Um, of course, that's just the actual flight time. We've still got all the setup and everything to do prior to that. Uh, so, good evening to... Uh, let's have a look who have we got. Simple Takeoffs, Interactive Studio, Larry McAllister, Cardinal 22, J Hog, um, Prefel Red Thread, Green Caracas. Hello to you guys. Thanks for coming on board. Von McLean, it's been a while, mate. Hope you're well. Terry, good to see you. Chris Shore as well, good to see you too. Uh, Juice Speed, I hope I can give you some fun and entertainment indeed in these uh, uncertain times that we're all in at the moment. Chris Hogg, hello to you. How are you doing, mate? Thanks for coming on uh, on board this evening. Simon Smith, uh, Lazarus, and Danny Rubble, good evening. Nightbot is with us as well, hopefully not drunk. And Behaving Dreamy, hi, mate. Hope you're doing well as uh, well. So the operational flight plan, I've not yet popped into the chat, let me go ahead and do that, uh, just bear with me one second, and here it comes, if you are watching on uh, YouTube, then that's just getting pinned now, if you're watching on Twitch, hello as well to uh, to the guys over, uh, over there. And UK Simpilot, thank you so much, UK Simpilot, for subscribing uh, through Prime. Thank you very much on uh, Twitch. Hope, uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy the flight this evening, and we'll see you on many more flights to uh, to come. UK Simpilot, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> dark fury. You've upset Nightbot by having a go at Nightbot. <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, I couldn't have planned that better. Uh, do you know what? Before we get started, I need to plug my tablet in. Obviously, I use that for the uh, for the McDo interface, and I got a feeling I'm going to run out of juice halfway through. You'll also be pleased to know that I've changed the batteries in the wireless mouse, so that shouldn't cause us an issue. But I do need to plug the tablet in, otherwise uh, I could find myself coming unstuck a little bit later on. There we go. That's uh, That's all done. Right, okay then. Will I be using the new toolbar pushback update? I absolutely will. I think it is genius. So, big shout out to uh, Ambitious Pilots for bringing that out. I think that is... Uh, that is wonderful. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get on board then, shall we? So, here we are at uh, Nice, as I say. Strangely enough, a slight disagreement with our departure runway tonight. 04 left seems to have been in use in the real world, which isn't the norm, by the way. 04 left is usually for arrivals only. Um, but here on VATSIM, I think 04 right is currently the one that uh, they're using. Let's just start by uh, grabbing the ATIS as per usual, and we'll, uh, we'll see what's happening. Uh, so have we got an ATIS there? One zero there it is. Kilometers. Clouds. Broken 4,000 feet. Temperature 9, 2.2. QNH1022, QFE1022. Confirm on first contact that you have received information, Delta. Uh, so I'm just looking at that Bonsoir. as well. This is nice code to Zer information, Bonsoir. Delta recorded at 2020 uh, UTC. Landing runway 04 left. Takeoff runway 04 right. That's what I was after. Expected approach arc. Yeah, landing runway and takeoff runway is going to be zero four right. Okay then. Well, let's just do a, a quick check of everything, and then we'll have a look how much fuel we're going to be taking as well. So the ground crew are knocking about. Let's see what weather we can expect when we get to Rome a little bit later on. Um, 
so the operational flight plan we've got a uh, some decent weather tonight, I think. Flight level 330, for those of you who are asking what uh, what we're going to be flying today. 330, that's fine, it's only an hour's flight time. Uh, so, 4.7 tonnes, and let's just see what we're actually going to go with. Check the weather. Uh, look at this beautiful weather in Rome and Naples as well. Pisa, all the Antwerps, Florence, yeah, absolutely fantastic weather in Italy this evening. So, no reasons why we shouldn't be able to get in there. It's only a very minor crosswind as, uh, as well coming into Rome. 3-4 left is our expected arrival runway there tonight. Let's have a look at the forecast. Uh, so, variable, wind's okay. Uh, ooh, wind shear, 3-4 right. Perhaps that's why they're using runway 3-4 left for the time being. Don't often see that. Um, not sure how well that would come off in the uh, sim anyway, but uh, that would uh, that would have been interesting. But yeah, beautiful weather. Nothing that uh, I see is going to stop us getting in. We'll read through some no times perhaps a little bit during the uh, during the cruise. Let's have a look at the Sigma charts. I have had to set up tonight's flight rather quickly, so naughty me, I've not actually read the no times. If anyone wants to go through and read the no times and flag up, flag up anything that uh, you think I should be aware of, then that's great PM training. So there's our flight route. Just having a look at this little sector here. Mine a bit of turbulence maybe coming in, but nothing that's going to greatly concern us. All right, so what fuel should we take? I reckon five tons should do us quite nicely. Hopefully we all agree. So there, let's um, let's ask our ground crew. Loading five tons of fuel. Okay, so that has been done in uh, in real time. That should take about uh, about a minute or so, given the fuel that we've already got on board. Okay, so with that uh, loaded, let's go through and do our uh, scans, and then we'll get the APU started as well. So the overhead looks uh, looks fine. Uh, in fact, no, it doesn't. Why aren't the fuel pumps turned off? They should be off for uh, refueling. The pack should be off as well before we get the APU bleed on. See, all signs are off, so that's good. All right, let's get the APU master started. One. Two, three. Uh, Galligoy, if you're familiar with the channel, mate, you'll know that I don't pay too much attention to the chat right at the start. We've got plenty of time in the cruise, but right now I want to get us. Uh, I want to be focused on what we're doing here on the ground, and then we'll get uh, get ourselves up. Uh, so, once the APU started, we'll get the APU bleed up. Let's come down. We've got the ISIS on standby. Uh, 1022. That's fine. Pedestal all looks where it. Everything should be where it is. Uh, and we've tuned to the tower frequency at the moment. We've also got approach frequency online as well, which is 13447. Um, so we'll just tune that in into the standby, and then we're not mucking about on departure. Semi stressful departure, this. It's not stressful, but we need to be cautious. Uh, so, one, three, four, four, seven, five. There we go. So, that's the, uh, that's the departure frequency in for us. Uh, everything else is where it should be. Cockpit door is, of course, open for the time being. APU is up and running, so let's start the APU bleed. We'll give that a minute and then we can get the packs on. Then passengers can start to board. Lovely. So, FCU, one, zero, two, Two flight directors one and two turn the constraints on. We expect flight level of seven zero today. That's it. Um, and of course, we've got it, uh, all our screens turned on, etc. I'm going to just turn these ones off. I'm always dubious at handcrafted airports just to try and save as much stress on the system as possible. We don't want to plan everything and get a crash to desktop on the taxi out. Nothing worse. Right, so all of that looks good, and I'm happy. Let's start bringing some passengers on board, shall we? So we'll get pack one on, pack two, and tell self-loading cargo. But we can start getting the uh, passengers on board, at which point we'll then look to start setting up the, uh, setting up the box.
Okay, passengers are boarding. Let's start setting things up. So, if we go to our uh, data page, I'm trying on the tablet here. S must be having a bit of a moment for some reason. Uh, oh, there we go. Now it's caught up. Uh, so, data page, IRS. We've got our three nav green aircraft status, leap engines, valid air cycle. So, a cars uh, init request. Occasionally, we get that not in database. I'm not too concerned about that because it should be uh, should be all there and fine. Let's have a look then at the operational flight plan. So our alternate tonight is Lima India November Romeo. No, it isn't Lima India Romeo November. And our call sign is Alpine 1635. Not an alphanumeric call sign tonight, which is a little bit rare. Um, Cost index of four, flight level three three zero, and the cruise temperature will be minus fifty seven according to the uh, OFP. What's the tropo? Three one seven six six. Okay, flight plan. Departing from zero four right, and we're expecting sortie six alpha, which will be down near the bottom. Uh, so, sorry, 6 Alpha, insert, and then the arrival at the other end should be ILS 34 left, ILS 34 left, and that is via LCAP 3 Charlie, which is the top one. And the via for that, just bring the charts on board for uh, us to have a quick look at. So that should be. Is it uh, is that Odula? Have a quick check. Uh, so Odula for uh, our arrival here, which is just there. So let's get that in. Distance three three seven. I've got three five five on the OFP, so not too much difference there. That's okay. Right, happy with the flight plan. I'm going to just scroll through and check this because very important that the aircraft does exactly what I expected to when we depart uh, Nice. Otherwise, we could end up with a close encounter into some terrain, as shown just here. So I want uh, the turn to begin as we pass 420 feet. And that's going to then take us to... Boarding completed, thank you. Uh, that's going to take us to Mac November 044. An overfly point, we can see in the chart, has uh, by the circled star, and we've got the little triangle shown here, so that's uh, accurate. We've got the Mac November 46, and then it's uh, Ahmad and Saudi, uh, with Merlu, sorry, in between those. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. Now, let me just see how that's looking on the navigation display. Uh, so, slightly, um, slightly out a little bit, I will keep an eye on that as we fly it. We may need to hand fly it just for a little while, which could be quite exciting. Um, do you know, I'm just going to come off an active frequency for a moment, otherwise that could get a little bit annoying. Okay, other things that I'm going to pop then into the, uh, into the flight plan. So. Um, with regards to our engine out procedure here, let's chat about this. So we need a um, a couple of waypoints in here. The Alpha Zulu Romeo VOR. I'm going to pop that in there. We've got Alpha Zulu Romeo, and I want to put in the one four eight. Uh, sorry, I want to put in the one one seven outbound radio from there. One one seven. This will all make sense in a little while. Uh, so there we go. Uh, and I also want to put another fix in here, which is Neres. And I'll explain all this in a little while. So there we go. That's Neres in there as well. Okay, onto the RadNav page then. Well, I'm going to pop that Alpha Zulu Romeo in that I just spoke about. And if I bring the charts back up, I think... Will it show us? Uh, is there actually a uh, is there a VOR? Uh, we've got the Nice VOR. Is there actually one on uh, on the uh, on the airport? Let me just uh, have a quick look and uh, and see. Uh, oh, it's the Alpha Zulu Romeo. That's uh, that's fine. 
that's good enough. Don't need any more than that. Okay, happy with the round nav page. On to the init B page then. Let's come down here and have a look. So, uh, zero fuel weight is 59.5 compared with the OFP. Uh, we've actually got 59.6 on the OFP, so slight discrepancy there. But um, we'll go with the, we'll go with the sim. It knows what's uh, it's been what's been loaded. We have a tailwind of 12 tonight, so not a big help, but we'll take it. Right, fuel planning four tons and what have we got we should have about five tons on board call it 4.9 for fuel planning um, there we go that gives us takeoff weight then of 64.2 fuel for our alternate quantity op flight plan is 1.2 tons remember that is as the crow flies uh, sorry, that is not as the crow flies, that is as it should be uh, as the crow flies is 0 0.9 so we're going to put it into our uh, into the fuel that we need for the proper route, which is, let's call that 1.3 tons, 1,213 kilograms, according to the operational flight plan, so rounded up 1.3. That gives us a uh, extra flight time of just 15 minutes. I say just, that's plenty, that's time for a hold, and uh, of course there's plenty of fuel for go-arounds and things, and we'll monitor that as we, uh, as we fly along. Okay, now onto the uh, performance page then. Let's bring up the calculator. So let me just get a good angle for you guys. All right, so here we are at Nice, Lima Fox Mike, November, and we're going to be departing on zero four right. Let's get the latest meta. Um. So yeah, QNH one zero two two. Runway condition is dry, anti ice will be off, and the takeoff weight was 64.2. I'll just add one to that, always better to be conservative. So then we've got takeoff CFG is forward, flex config 1, packs will be off. Let's see if we can calculate that. Lovely, there we go, and that's all the information that uh, we need. Let's pop that in. So, V1 is 139, V2, uh, sorry, VR is 139, and V2 is 140. V speeds all very close to each other, as you would expect from a nice long runway. Transition altitude 5,000 feet, flaps 1. And our thrust reduction acceleration is uh, 1,010, 1,010. Engine acceleration also 1,010. And clean is 215. Wonderful. Uh, maximum takeoff weight, of course, non applicable to us. Beautiful. So, let's um, go through and, uh, and do, our, uh, do our brief. First of all, have we got. Have we got. Um, some of the doors closed while well, the jetway is still in place that's uh, that's okay let's bring up the chart and brief what we need to know so here in nice of course for those of you familiar with the airport will be familiar with the terrain around it well first of all the weather here in nice is a little bit overcast but nothing that's going to stop us getting back in here should we have an issue uh, of course we would expect the landing on zero four left if that was the uh, if that was uh, the cause for uh, cause for concern, um, aircraft is the experimental version of the A32NX. So we know we've got in-op radar, we've got in-op weather, but we do have working TCAS. Uh, no TAMs to be aware of, none that I've had time to check, if I'm completely honest. And, uh, of course, we've got ATC on the ground as well, so that's quite helpful with regards to taxi routings, if any uh, particular taxiway or anything is closed. Threats, then. Let's have a look at threats. So the biggest threat, of course, is what's straight ahead of us on our departure. We take off from runway 04 right, and we need to make that immediate right-hand turn, otherwise we have a close encounter with um, with the terrain straight ahead so threat is the biggest thing here in uh, in Nice so a nice turn I think it what was it something like 420 feet up we need to make that right turn but I'll check that in a second um, yeah and that's uh, so that's 
pretty much the uh, the main issue here. Minimum safe altitude for that first part of our departure is 10,700 feet because of course we've got the Alps just to the north of us and then down to the south 3,000 feet once we're safely out over the sea. Let's have a look at how we expect to uh, get to our departure away. So we're parked at stand 42 so I expect we'll push back facing south on Charlie and then a couple of options depending on what ATC wants to do. We could take Charlie 1 and then maybe Charlie 2 um, which then, uh, or if see if he so wishes, we could perhaps take Bravo 1, Alpha 1 across, 0, 4 left. But I would expect Charlie 1, Charlie 2, and then uh, Whiskey all the way down to holding point Whiskey 3. Our performance calculations are valid for a full length departure. If they wanted us to use an intersection departure for whatever reason, then we'd have to rerun re some calculations, but that's okay. And the actual departure then yeah 420 so as soon as we've departed 420 feet immediate right hand turn it's an RNAV departure so autopilot will be able to take care of this however just having a quick look on the navigation display it didn't look that perfect so I'm gonna make sure we double check that as we're taxiing and departing to make sure that that uh, is going to work if I turn the autopilot on if not I'll delay turning on the autopilot until we are uh, flying direct towards Mike November 044 there's also a max speed limit here of 210 knots that's just to help us climb out um, so our uh, performance page if we go down here we can see our um, clean speed is 410 so we won't be able to clean up until we've uh, till we've passed that so we might as well fly out to Mike November 044 at uh, flaps 1 which is going to be at S speed 192 let's go ahead and uh, pre-select that now 192 and how long does that restriction last for? Uh, oh, it's only until 044, then we can uh, then we can go. All right. So then let's um, let's just talk about the emergency brief. So standard emergency brief here for uh, for the departure at uh, at Nice standard Airbus emergency brief, but it is a non-standard engine out procedure, and that's where it gets a little bit interesting. So. The different things that I popped in to the um, to the Radnav page and the Fixes page. Let's have a quick look. If I can just put the plan page up and zoom out a little bit, or oh, maybe actually it will just zoom in. Um, now is Nires showing on there somewhere? Let's have a quick look. Um, I thought we'd put Nerez in there. Let me just double check that to uh, fix this page. Yeah, November Echo, Romeo Echo, Sierra. So, where's that? November Echo, Romeo... Oh, it's Alpha Sierra! Ah, there you go. Always worth checking. Let's uh, try that again. Right, and now is that show... It? There it is. Let's uh, bring that in. Lovely. Okay, so hopefully what you should be able to see is a nice blue dash line leading us to uh, Neres. Well, this is our holding point should anything go bang after V1. So, our engine out procedure, if I just bring this back up here, at one mile DME from Alpha Zuma Royal DOR, we're going to make a right-hand turn to heading 148 and intercept and follow the Alpha Zulu Romeo radial 118 outbound to the Neres holding point. Um, and then we've obviously got the uh, the hold there at uh, Nerez, which are, consists of right-hand turns. So what I popped into the fixes page there, we've got Alpha Zulu Romeo, we've got the radial 117, the idea being, of course, that if I just zoom that back uh, in for a moment, that if we take off, we then fly, we turn right when we pass one mile from Alpha Zulu Ro Romeo, and we are going to intercept... Oh, hang on, wrong window. We're going to intercept uh, we're going to fly 148 and fly and intercept that 117 out by radial so essentially we're going to take off turn right heading 148 uh, and then fly along this blue line which then leads us nicely to Neres which is uh, shown just here okay so that's our engine out procedure all uh, all done I think I heard uh, I think I heard the click telling us that the 
that the passengers were all fully boarded. So we can now uh, get rid of the jetway, close the doors, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board our EasyJet service. Please place your large bags in the overhead locker, wheels first. <laughs> and keep your small just turn the windscreen wipers on. I've just ruined the window. These include laptops, handbags, duty-free, and loose items of clothing. Once you have safely stowed your cabin bag, please take your seat. To help us ensure a prompt departure, we would kindly ask that you keep the aisle clear, enabling all remaining customers to board. Your seatbelt can now be fastened ready for departure. This is a no-smoking service. Thank you for observing this policy. Right, it's time to talk to ATC. I just want to do a couple more checks. Okay, let's contact ATC and see what they've got for us. Nice Tower, good evening, Alpine 1635, stand 42, type A320 Neo, requesting IFR clearances filed, and we have information Delta. Alpine 1635, stand by, call back shortly, contact uh, Ranger Rick, you would put in 1-5, put in the main wind, not the gusts. Alpine 1 6 3 5, are you ready to copy? We'll go. Alpine 1635. Alpine 1635, you're clear to uh, Roma Fiorentino via uh, 36 Alpha departure, runway 0 for right, uh, national climb, flight level 100, squawk 1000. Clear departure, runway 04 right, Saudi 6 Alpha, initial climb 70 and squawk 1000 for Alpine 1635. Alpine 1635, confirm uh, initial flight level 100. Correction, initial climb is flight level 100, Alpine 1635. Alpine 1635, we've correct. So we'll just go ahead and change that. There we go. All done. Wonderful. So now, this is where uh, things have changed ever so slightly with regards to our, uh, our pushback setup. So we're all happy with that. Let's quickly just run the before start checklist. So our cockpit preparation is complete. The signs are on and auto. Adidas, we've got three now green. Fuel quantity is 4980 and balanced FMGS is set. Altimeter is 1022 at 20 feet. So now I'd normally call the ground crew into place using the uh, toolbar pushback. Uh, in order to do that, I would just select the pushback. That's now changed and now wants me to pre-plan the pushback. Well, I can't pre-plan the pushback until I know what I'm being given. I can sort of make an educated guess. Uh, so if we look to uh, pre-plan the pushback here using the new update from toolbar pushback, we'll just let this load. Uh, so what I am expecting, of course, is a, uh, a push straight back and if we put, uh, put one of the nodes there and then just here, that to me is, uh, is what we're expecting. Okay, and we'll enter that. 
Um, I can't. Rec I don't want to request that just yet, of course, until we've spoken to ATC. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm going to ask uh, the ATC for uh, a pushback clearance, and hopefully it'll uh, be what we've just uh, <laughs> what we've just planned. And our Alpine one six three five is ready to push and start stand four two. Alpine one six three five push and start approve face south QNH one zero two two. Push and start approve facing south QNH one zero two two. Alpine one six three five. Excellent. So that is uh, what we want. In that case, we're going to get the beacon light on. We're going to start the timer. Acupressure is in the green. Let's get transponder on to standby. And now we can just uh, call the ground crew up. So we'll request our pushback. Virtual pilot, do I like was there? They fly to my local airport, so I guess it would be rude to say no. So our before start checklist below the line. Windows and doors are closed and armed. Beacon light is on, phone is on silent, parking brake is on. So here comes the magic. Release that parking brake. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. Yeah, we'll start in the sequence. Okay, back he goes, and let's uh, start the engine. So engine mode selected to start, and starting engine number one. And we no longer have to concern ourselves with this push. Toolbar pushback is going to do everything. In fact, we can even just get rid of that and uh, enjoy the ride. Ranger Rick, below the line, is literally, if you've got the checklist in front of you, available to download from our Discord server, link in the video description down below, um, you'll see that the checklist, some of them have divided into little bits above the line and below the line, so it literally is, um, I'm just reading the bit below, below the line. Ladies and gentlemen, we now ask for your attention while we take you through the safety procedures on this aircraft. A safety card is in your seat pocket showing the exit routes, oxygen masks, life jackets and brace position that you must adopt if you hear brace, brace. There are two emergency exits at the rear, four in the middle and two at the front of the cabin. Floor line. Tower, easy, top, uh, top switch, one lima, ready for taxi. Behind you. Your seatbelt is fastened, adjusted, and released as shown. It must be fastened when the seatbelt signs are on, and we recommend that you keep it fastened at all times. If the air supply fails, masks will drop from above you. Pull a mask towards you. Put the mask over your nose and mouth. Alpine one Lima, uh, taxi, hold the point Charlie one via Charlie. You may disconnect. Put on your own mask Roger. before helping others. Start. Clear it to disconnect. If we land on water, Have take the life flight. jacket from under your seat. Holding position, Put it over your head. Thank you and goodbye. Pass the tapes around your waist. Click together. It's all about wild camera. It's for force and hard to not inflate it inside the air. information, there's a request on the side. Inflate by pulling the toggle. If it fails to... Open that 844 information echo is now current. You clear to over Fimicino. Good engine start on number two. Departure on runway right, zero right, national plan flight level 100, squawk 1000. So we'll do our flows now. We wish you engine mode set is normal. Make sure the cabin door is locked. APU bleeds off. anti not required. APU off. And arm the spoilers. Check rudder zero. Flaps one. And the flex. Uh, not the flex, sorry. The. Um, 
trim is 24.6. And that has just brought me to something. I didn't enter the flex there. I've just remembered that. So I've just entered the flex. There we go. Is that Dark Fury flying top Swiss? Why would you do that to yourself? So it's just got quite busy here, hasn't it? Which is nice. Flight control check. Full left. Full right. Full up. Full down. Rudder. Full right. Rudder. Full left. Neutral. Let's see where he's going to send us then. And Tower Alpine 1635 is ready for taxi. Alpine 635, uh, taxi, Holding Point Charlie 1 on via Charlie. Holding Point Charlie 1 via Charlie for Alpine 1635. So straight forward. So, as we're on a nice straight part of the uh, taxi here, we'll do our pet checks. So, no change to the performance. Flex 70, QNH 1022. Engine out, as we recall, is one mile from Alpha Zulu Romeo. We're going to make a right hand turn, 148, and intercept that radial, which we've got the blue dashed line on the navigation display. Holding point of Neres. Departure is the sorting 6 Alpha. And stop climb is flight level one zero zero. The ground chart here for uh, Nice isn't incredibly clear. There's no taxi lines on it. Alpine 1635, cross Hanway, left, then taxi, on left, then taxi, Olympic Point, Quebec 3, via whiskey. Cross, cross, Olympic Point, Quebec 3, via whiskey for Alpine 165. So I just put the strobes on as we cross that runway. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to ask him if we can take Whiskey 3. And Alpine 165, can we take full length departure Whiskey 3? Alpine uh, 1635 FM, uh, so taxi to link point Whiskey 3 via Whiskey. Roger, thank you. We'll uh, tax a whiskey to Holding Point Whiskey 3, runway 04 uh, right, Alpine 165. Alpine 1 Lima, are you ready for departure? Roger, Alpine 1 Lima. Okay, before takeoff checklist, Alpine one Lima, to the line, flight controls are checked, departure briefing is confirmed, flap setting is config one. 1. FMA takeoff data 139 blue, 140 magenta, climb nav blue, 1FD2, 10,000 blue, and flex is 70. Transponder is set, ECAM memo, takeoff no blue, AFB is stowed. Joanna, am I saying Nice is not all that nice? Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being able to afford to live next door to it, let's just put it that way. It's a rather rich part of the world, isn't it? Or rich part of Europe, at least. Cruise, 
So the reason I've asked for full length departure is just because that's what we um, that's what we calculated for. It may be I'm I'm sure we could have done the departure. That wouldn't have been an issue. But just for s quickness and speed, for the sake of a few feet, we may as well use the uh, full length. I've still got my strobes on. Naughty me. They should have been turned off, of course. Let's get those off now. Again, that's when it's useful to have two pilots in the flight deck. While stationary, of course, turn the taxi lights off as well. And there you can see the train. Line up and wait, runway 04 right, Alpine 1635. Let's pop all those lights back on then now. Alpine uh, 38 Echo Zulu, stand uh, 48, now ready, push to start. Alpine uh, 38 Echo Zulu, push and start, approve uh, phase uh, south, QNH 1022. Uh, push and start, approve phase south, uh, 38 Echo Zulu. Before takeoff checklist below the land. Cabin is secured, engine mode selector is normal, TCAST RA packs off, anti ice off. Oh, too much break. Nice tower, top suits 1385 on RP Alpha 0 for left. What a great approach that is. Top Swiss 1385, Mr. Well, hello, on the for left, and number one, continue approach. Continue approach, Top Swiss 1385. Okay, we're in place and we're ready to go. We're just waiting for some uh, separation time, presumably, from the aircraft that's just departed, who I think was Dark Fury, if I recognise his voice. We can just see the aircraft on the RNAV approach behind us, or the RMP approach behind us, just coming up on TCAS. Not sure that's entirely accurate. I don't think you get aircraft displayed behind you on the navigation display, but we'll pop that down to a series. Uh, wind 320 degrees, 4 knots, uh, runway 04 right, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 04 right, Alpine 1635. Okay then guys, here, uh, here we go. So, remember, turn at 420 feet, and engine 1 is critical. So, take off, start the chrono, release parking brakes, set 40%, uh, sorry, 50%, N1. Engine stable, set take off thrust. Man flex, SRS, runway. A little bit of rudder, right rudder to keep us in. Checked. V1, rotate. Good evening, runway to full left, number two, continue approach. So ignore the flight directors for the moment, we've got nav shown, gear up. 420 feet. Now we'll make that right hand turn. Top six one three eight five. Wind three two zero degrees four knots. Runway zero four left. Clear to land. Runway zero four left. Clear to land. Top six one three eight five. Alpine one six six four. Three correction. Alpine one six three five. Contact me. Approach one three four four seven five. Bye bye. One three four four seven Alpine one six three five. Bye bye. Lufthansa eight four four. Taxi 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go direct to mic November 046. Uh, uh, sorry, 044. Because that's not quite accurate. So if we go direct, pop that in. Autopile 1 now engaged. And let's contact. Departure Alpine 1635, passing altitude 3000 on the Saudi 6 Alpha departure for flight level 100. Alpine 1635, Nice approach, bonsoir, identify the climb flight level 140. Climb flight level 150, Alpine 1635. Alpine 1635, negative, flight level 140. Correction, flight level 140, Alpine 1635. So we've got open climb flight level 140. Yeah, so the departure didn't look absolutely spot on there, did it? So I just hand flew that a little bit, and then once I was happy, we were uh, headed towards Mike November 044. I gave that a direct before popping the autopilot on. Once we've passed this, we can accelerate away and clean up. So there we go, let's push for managed speed, the nose will lower, our airspeed will start to increase. Flap zero, disarm the spoilers, we can now release the ground crew, ground crew? <laughs> Cabin crew. Uh, Danny, have I been drinking? I wish. It's great to see little pack ECAM warnings come on there now. To be fair, that wasn't a problem. We got pack one on, which is good up until I think it's flight level 240. Um, just a little bit of uh, workload management there. As long as we got one on, we're good. We recommend that you keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you are seated. Toilets are located at each end of the cabin. Remember that smoke. Yeah, Francis, après, excusez, nous on est en train de, on a changé de fréquence pendant qu'on, qu'on vous euh, souhaitait la bonne soirée. Donc bonne soirée à vous. Merci beaucoup du service. Au revoir. Merci bonne soirée. Coming up then to uh, 10,000 feet. Let's get our lights off. Flight one six three five. Contact Marseille Control one two four. This man six five zero. Have a nice flight. Bye bye. One two four three five zero for Alpine one six three five. Good night. Over to Marseille then. Marseille Control, good evening. Alpine 1635, passing flight level 110 for 140, direct Amaro. We got the right frequency there, 12435. Should be 12465, not 35. Let's try again. Is that what I read back? ATC didn't correct me if that's the case. Marseille Control, good evening. Alpine 1635, passive flight level 1284140, direct Ahmad. Alpine 1635, Marseille, bonsoir, climb flight level 330, direct to Soudry. Climb flight level 330, direct to Soudry for Alpine 1635. 10, contactez ma correction 10 approche 134 décimal 475 bonne soirée. Uh, oh, do we have two Sudries in there? In that case, let's just clear out. Okay, ici uh, Air France 0910, merci. And tidy up the flight plan. Vous dites bientôt bonne soirée à vous. Oui, vous confirmez vous contactez 10 approche 134 475. So now open climb uh, flight level 330. 10 approche 134. 475, uh, ici Air France 0910, bonsoir à vous, merci du service. Bonsoir. 
Right, I can go good evening. Uh, Itaro 126, uh, 300, Kramer 370, Edmund Barsi. Itaro 126, Marseille, bonsoir, recycle. Uh, Galligoy, yeah, once we're at cruise level, and ATC, leave me alone. We'll, uh, we'll do what we need to. Let's release the passengers, shall we? Uh, Rue Martins, I still cannot turn down the standby, yes. It's still insanely bright. Ici Air France 0910, uh, Nice, bonsoir. Uh, Hobbsy, am I using Hoppy? I've not turned it on, but I could do. And I mean, yeah, the seatbelt signs were still on. That's fine. I mean, one sure above. Any time above flight level, well, uh, about ten thousand feet, flight level one zero, then you can uh, you can turn them off. There we go. We're now uh, connected on the Hoppy network. How soon do you reckon we're going to reach our top of climb then? Alpine 1 Lima, proceed direct to Moodle. Direct Moodle, uh, Alpine 1 Lima. It's how we want to six. you are radar identified, proceed direct to Papa Papa Golf. Direct Papa Papa Golf, it's how we want to six. It is quite busy tonight, mind you, I suppose. Nice is a nice place to fly out of, and uh, always gets lots of good ATC, which is what we're here for. Adds to our immersion, doesn't it? And as I said previously, once we get to Rome, I will bring the sun up so we can have a look at the new scenery that's been recently released. But, I mean, I don't know, guys. What do you prefer? Do you prefer... Um, Flights done in uh, in live time, obviously live weather. I think that goes without saying. Um, but um, live uh, live time, yay or nay? Or would you always prefer to fly in the daylight? Interesting to hear your thoughts on that. What I can also do is now go and uh, clear out our radnav page, so we can get rid of all the. Uh, blue dashed lines etc. Clear out the fixes page as well. So I can do this from the comfort of my tablet whilst you're uh, still enjoying the, the flight deck view. There we go, they should all cleared up now. Uh, so your thoughts now coming in. Uh, yeah, sorry about that ATC being very very loud just there. Nothing I can do about that. Does anybody else get that? It's very frustrating. Um, but, uh, Barry, you like to see the scenery. Dark, you like lifetime and live weather. Ranger Rick, lifetime and live weather. Galligoy, real all the time. Uh, Hobsing, sometimes you prefer flying on daytime so you can enjoy the realistic scenery. I have to admit, my, my, I, I love the scenery. As much as nighttime flying and realistic flying is great, the scenery is just something else, isn't it? Uh, try not. You actually like nighttime flying more. That's interesting. Uh, John says, depends really. The sim does look great over cities at night coming in for approach. That is true. Uh, Wolfie, I'm using the um, TCA from uh, Airbus Captain's Pack from uh, from Thrustmaster. Uh, Nabil Nab. Well, yeah, we always have live weather unless it's broken. But uh, other than that, we always have live weather. And Joseph, you like the occasional night flight. Uh, Ranger, can you fly on real time when you fly on VATSIM? Yes, of course. The controllers have absolutely no idea what time your simulator is set to. The main thing is that the weather is the same. That's the most important bit. Um, Danny, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, flying in the daylight is better. Night is incredibly dark in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Is it not incredibly dark in the real world? <laughs> I've just got to throw that out there. Uh, Lazarus, whatever you enjoy most, you're here for the company. Ah, oh, Lazarus, you're uh, part of a great community team. We, uh, we love you all. Uh, and Brian, you like the scenery in the clouds. Well, that's the other thing, of course. At night time, you don't get to see the clouds, do you? Uh, J-Hog makes no difference to you, you can crash in daytime or night time. 
<laughs> Paul Newman, good morning to you. Wednesday morning in Australia. How you doing, Paul? Hope you're well. So flight time's not particularly long. We're going to start looking at uh, our approach in a minute. Um, Dr. Magic, a member for 11 months. Wow. Good evening. You think you missed boarding? No wonder, Dr. Magic, we've got you uh, We've got you on board now. Thanks so much, Dr. Magic, for your uh, kind support over the last 11 months. That is, uh, that is fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, Wheels 24-7, you started with the stable version of 320, but having trouble switching to experimental. Um, keep failing to install the experimental. That's strange. I've never had a problem. Oh, FedEx. I love guys that fly cargo. Identified. I can see your flight plan. You have a step climb flight level 340. Do you want to climb 340? Negative, no, stay at flight level three, uh... uh Ranger three, says, uh, okay, lately you've been playing in real time when I'm vaccine. So after work, of course, it's always dark, good to know. Yeah, you can put any time you want in the, in the sim. <laughs> Brian says, J-Hug, we can find you better at night looking for the fireball. <laughs> Dave Hudson, good evening. Uh, Howling Crazy on Twitch, uh, you'd fly cargo, but you need a fully functional plane for maximum flight sim. Yeah, there's no fully functional cargo one just yet, is there? Which is a shame. It will come. It will come. We've got Phoenix on the way, we've got PMDG. Granted, neither of them are cargo aircraft, but... In fact, they've just turned, are they Airbus have just turned the 321, is it, into a cargo aircraft? If memory serves. Rudder control, Lightara 126. Go ahead. Rudder control, Lightara 126, request 5390. Lightara 126, Lightara 3390. So here is our arrival. We are on the... which one are we on? We're on... proceed direct to Moodle. Where? Ah, oh, there we go. Proceed direct to move for Alpine one six three five. Okay. I can't wait until the beam waypoints function works. It will really help with the uh, fuel checking. Basically, the beam, uh, as I've done a direct now, which is fifty five miles away, what it does is it still keeps your flight route shown on the navigation display, so you can see the waypoints that you're passing. Which is really nice. A uh, Ranger, can the electric pump be used on its own for flight control checks? Um, why would you want to do that, Ranger? If I, um, if I've got a uh, an aircraft that hasn't got fully working hydraulics and I'm pushing back. I'm probably thinking I'm not going to fly this aircraft. <laughs> I want the mechanic. I'm not going anywhere with it. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we're on the L Cap 3 Charlie Rider. Right? Arthur, good evening to you, sir. Hope you're well. I'm just doing a quick ATIS request for our uh, arrival airport. We've got Macol Star. Just to see if we've got any ATIS, and then we can start planning our arrival. That's Alt Cruise. Let's get uh, TCAS set to below. Correct, thank you. Uh, Ranger, to do the flight control check at the stat. No, no, you would, you, you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, right, so Galigoy, now we're at our uh, cruise level. Let's have a quick look outside for you.
I love the way the sound changes as the camera rotates. Oh, so listening to that call, sounds like there's no ATC in, uh, in Italy. Yeah, no eight is available. Okay, that's fine. So let's start planning our own uh, arrival then in a moment, shall we? So as we're looking at this, we're going to come in at L uh, cap, and we've got our first little constraint here at uh, at Gopal. So we obviously want anywhere between flight level two one and one nine. Um, max speed two five zero knots from there on in. So quite a nice slow approach into Rome, and then at Nibug we want to be between uh, flight level nine zero. And Alpine six thousand. Zulu with you. Uh, climbing flight level one four zero, and uh, we're inbound on Mars. From there, Alpine it brings us in Zulu all the way nicely Zulu. in and around. Now, how far away is Adula from the runway? Does it tell us, uh, Adula? Seventeen miles. And at Nipsa, we want to be at two thousand five hundred feet. Well, we're not going to get a nice CDA with uh, with this approach, are we? Okay. So just studying the charts. Let's work out what we're going to do. Let's begin our descent, of course, in order to hit our first constraint, which is at Gopal. In that case. We're currently at flight level, what is it, 330 today. And to be at flight level 210, we've got so much time to uh, to get down here. There's, there's really no rush. Uh, so we only need to lose 12,000 feet to uh, hit Gopal at the right altitude. So that's about... 40 miles away with the tailwind. So let's put Gopal in and set a range rings of 40 miles around there. So we go to the flight plan and then the fixes page. And G O P O L. I'm now going to double check I've spelt this right. G O P O L. Yeah, after the departure. Near as. Near as. Um, and a radius of 40 miles. That's where we begin our first descent, or that's where I would expect to have our first descent. I then want to have a look at Nieburg. So, I'm going to pop into. Over to Unicom now. Thank you very much for the service. Good night, Alpine 1635. Let's just pop Unicorn on frequency. All station, all station frequency. There we go. Uh, so our top descent is in. There we are. Um, so I'm also just going to pop in then Nibug. Pop Nibug into our performance uh, page. Sorry, progress page. And from there, I'll work out and monitor our descent as we want to make sure that we are between flight level 90 
and 6,000. Now, of course, what we could do, and I would imagine what would happen in real world, particularly with a, uh, an arrival like this, is once we get down to 6,000 feet and we start to meet the glide slope, we can make the base turn and capture the RLS. Just look at the speed restrictions, however. We're going to have to adhere to those to make sure that everything is... Um, to make sure that everything is uh, nice and straightforward and we've also got a few other pilots I think flying with us today so for their sake as well we're going to respect all the speed constraints but with regards to a nice arrival brief we've got uh, a flight level two, uh, sorry a uh, maximum speed of 270 that's fine we'll descend at 270 get down to around flight level 21 at Gopal from Gopal we'll continue our descent all the way down towards 6,000 feet uh, by Nibug. We don't need to be 6,000 feet as long as we're above 6,000 and below flight level 90. And then from there we're going to be able to uh, monitor the uh, glide slope etc with regards to uh, getting green dot and, uh, and things like that. Um, so, sorry just reading a, a private message Someone on Vatsim is trying to uh, get someone over to uh, to cover Rome. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I'll just send a quick message back. Trying to get some ATC in Rome for us. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? So it would be amazing if we had ATC for the arrival. Hey, Nick. Good evening to you. Hope you're well. Uh, yeah, so as we're coming down, let's just say 6,000 feet, we're going to be pretty much green dot as well as we're coming down here, just because of the uh, restrictions, so we can expect green dot down here, and then as we make the base, we'll pull flaps 1, flaps 2 obviously, with the glide, and then that's uh, that's all good. After landing then, uh, God knows where we'll park, I believe it is just here actually. Um, so, we'll be landing 3-4 left, I'll probably expect to vacate, hopefully, it would be nice if we can vacate Alpha Fox, if not the Alpha Delta, backtracking on Alpha, and then uh, parking at uh, this satellite terminal just here, with a monorail, apparently. I wonder if that's going to be uh, in the sim. Now we've got Handcrafted Airport, that'd be nice. Right, best laid plans. Let's see if that's uh, <laughs> let's see if that's actually what happens. Let's send off a rather request as well, then we can enter that destination data. So that's been sent off. We'll get the company message in a moment. Company message, let's see if that's the one that we're after. Uh, so here's the meta. So the winds currently are 020 at 8. So I still expect runway 3-4 to be in use. Yeah, 020 zero zero at 8. Cav OK. Temperature is 4 degrees. We're going to get a nice arrival then into uh, into Rome today with a Cav OK. 4 degrees. Q and H is 1019. Let's go ahead and pop that in. So, QNH 1019. Temperature is plus 4. That's quite cold, isn't it? The wind, 0208. And transition altitude here is 6,000 feet. And let's just bring the chart up and have a look at our. Uh, approach so it's going to be ILS yeah ILS full lights working runway visual range is well above 750 meters it's going to be 214 
platform altitude for the approach is 2,500 feet. Minimum safe altitude as we're coming in. Now we've got some different sectors here. So the northern sector we're at 3,700, but we've then got 5,800 as we're coming down on the downwind leg. So need to be aware of uh, aware of that. Should anything start to uh, start to go wrong. ILS frequency 108.9 and airfield elevation is 8. Let's check out the missed approach then. So we climb out on runway heading, yeah, runway heading 3000 feet and then at the ILS DME 2 miles make a left turn, max speed 200 knots to join the 289 outbound radial from Ostia Climb maintain 1,500 until 5 miles and then climb to 2,000 within 8 miles OST continue to a distance of 90 miles OST and hold right that's interesting that's very interesting because we're holding a, a waypoint which is not a real waypoint right let's uh begin that descent, so what did I say we are coming down to? Initially we are coming just down to uh, flight level 210. Nice steady descent. Okay, so let's just pull speed as well. We'll set 270, which is our maximum speed anyway. Monitor our descent as we're coming down. Uh, right, so a couple of things that we can do here then with regards to that uh, missed approach. Let me see. Uh, so it's all based off of Oscar Sierra Tango. 70 miles out. All based off Oscar Sierra Tango, and we want to join the 289 radial outbound. So let's pop that in down here. 289. And that should then lead us to sort of 90 miles out on that radial. So we need to actually create a fix for this if we wanted to hold it. In. So let's have a look then at um, at doing that. If I can remember which menu it is to uh, access. Uh, so it's going to be the um, stored waypoints. Uh, so we're just going to call this uh, hold. Ah, oh, for hold at Rome. Could be anything you want, really. Uh, so the place is based off Oscar Sierra Tango. Bearing 289, and it is at a distance of 19 miles. So let's pop that in. Uh, oh, actually. that wasn't correct. I actually based it off the NDB, not the VOR. Do you know what? Let me quickly do that again. Let's call it Hold A, shall we? Uh, so it's based on Oscar Sierra Tango. So that's the place. The bearing is 27... Uh, sorry, 289. 
and the distance 19 miles. So yeah, it needs to be based on this second one, not the top one. The top one's NDB, it's based off this one here, 114.9. I mean, it says they're at exactly the same uh, place, but uh, in terms of distance, but the latitude and longitude might be slightly different. Uh, right, okay, let's hit store then. So now, if I go back to our flat plan page, fix info, I should be able to put hold alpha in there. There it is. Let me see now. There it is. There's hold alpha, and there is our missed approach path taking us directly to hold alpha. Wonderful. Nice when things work, isn't it? Um, so we've got ground on 1219 asking us to give them a call. Okay, 1219, let's see. Uh, Rome, good evening. Alpine 1635 is with you. Roger, Alpine one six three five is just a man reminder to that uh, the car leave ground is human. Roger, I'll give you contact once uh, once online, Alpine one six three five. Roger that Alpine one six three five just for your information you've got uh, another Alpine and uh, fifty miles away from you. Roger, thank you for the uh, the traffic service. I'll apply in 165. Uh, so they've now come online. They've also got an ATIS, which is telling us they're arriving on runway 16. Uh, all that work for the missed approach. Um, right, this could be interesting. They want us to arrive on runway 16. Hmm. So 16 left, I believe, is the norm. Which now means we're at Al Cap 3 Alpha Bravo Papa. Let me see which one we're going to need. Nope, not that one. That's the one. So, add that one to our route. And it's now the... Let's have a look at the chart for, uh, for that. For runway 1-6. Which chart is it? Why isn't it playing ball with me? Come on. I'd like the correct chart, please. If need be. I'm going to have to search it out. So, it's going to be... let's have a look. We want to come in by L cap, don't we? Um, that's the one. There's our new arrival. Let's get rid of that so we're not confused. Let's also get rid of this so we're not confused. Okay, now this one's a little bit more dangerous because we've got terrain now that we need to uh, be aware of. So we're now at flight level 210, I'm aware we need to continue our descent, so I just need to quickly work out what we're doing here. This, that's the wrong one, go away. Um, uh, that isn't the correct one, that's not the correct one, that's not the correct one, that's the correct one. Uh, okay, so we now want uh, flight level 90 at GIPAP. Let's put the new arrival in. So, it's going to be now flight level 
six left. Uh, sorry, Atlas one six left. Zulu. Where is one six left? Zulu. Do they have a Zulu? Where's the X ray? Sorry, X ray. X ray. So one six left. X ray. And it's now on the dum dum dum. It's now going to be the L cap three alpha. That brings us in via. Is it Suvok? And insert. Okay, let me just pull a heading because we were on the start. We need to work out. Let's continue now. We are far too high to make this arrival. Far, far too high. Oh, this is a mess. Okay. Is there a hold? Let's head back towards Gipap. And we will then clear out anything that's not going to make sense to us. This is what happens when ATC come on and change things at the last minute. So we're going to go from Gipap and then we will fly the procedure just to lose altitude. So there it is. Let's start getting ourselves down again. I need to make sure that in the chart we have got clearance from the ground. Uh, so, give up one to be flat level nine zero. Let's get down. Thrust idle open percent flat level zero nine zero. The 80s has now changed again. Oh, come on, guys. Initially, when it came up, it w Right, do you know what? They've now started using 3-4, right? They've changed the uh, 80s now. Originally, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't correct. So... That is frustrating. That is very frustrating. Do you know what? tell you exactly what I'm going to do. Let me pulse heading. We're going to continue on our way down. And... We are going to just pop in the arrival runway initially that we were going to land on anyway, which is ILS 34 left which they've now changed it back to. I'm going to pop in no star. We're going to put in... Uh, let's put in uh, Odulu or Nipsa. That's the Via. There it is. We're going to eyeball this. And they've just asked if I need assistance. I didn't until 
the wrong ATIS information was put up. Right. Wrong round, just for information, we've had incorrect uh, ATIS information from you, which has now changed again. So we're now going to be flying a left hand traffic pattern downwind for runway 34 left. So now we can actually see everything down here. Not how I like to do things. I like things to be accurate and correct, but there you are. Uh, Simon, given the wind zero two zero one six left makes more sense. I'm not sure it does. Okay, so the airport is about 12.30 miles out over here. In fact, there it is. We're now just on a downwind leg, so... Hopefully the scenery will be pretty when we get there. <laughs> yes, Alpine 1635, just so you're aware, incorrect ATIS information was provided, same 16 was in use. Uh, it's now back to runway 34 left, so we're now going to make left hand traffic and uh, bring ourselves in runway 34 left. Alpine 1635, sorry, my fault. I didn't press the right button for push to talk, no problem. The ATC is still the same information alpha and uh, runway news are 3 for right and 3 for left. So you can join uh, left runway, runway 3 for left uh, report uh, on final. Wilco, Alpine 165. Shall we get the seatbelt signs on? Is the bar open? Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. If you can please return to your seat and ensure that your seatbelt is securely fastened. If you are traveling with an infant, please ensure that they are secured safely using the infant seatbelt provided. The toilets will now go out of use until the So we've got Indy Fox Sierra Whiskey is now nicely identified. Maybe we'll we'll get that CDA in. So we will absolutely be keeping an eye on um, on the TCAS. Let me just tidy up our flight plan as well. So if we go direct to... Um, if we have a look then at going direct to Nipsa... We'll just pop that in. I'll still pull the heading so that we don't actually do that. But it should give you some track miles. Once we get there, it'll be 23 miles away. Coming up on 10,000 feet, let's get our uh, lights on. I know terrain clearance, we're fine. We're over the sea, so uh, I'm not uh, not concerned about that in the slightest. Right, so we're now at 10,000 feet. Let's roll our speed back f to 250 knots. We'll also activate the approach phase, so that's done. Just another note for the missed approach. We would have to do it flaps for one. Never mind missed approach. How about uh, <laughs> missed descent and arrival? Okay, so we're going to start bringing ourselves around now for the base. Twenty-one miles away. 
we're still a little bit high. Let's get ourselves down. Platform are just 2,500 feet, so let's go ahead and set that. Local pressure is 1019. There's our arrival runway. Now all we have to do is get down in time and slow down for it. Ranger Drake, thank you so much for your 10 Canadian dollars, that very generous super chat. Uh, Ranger Rick, thank you so much for saying, I uh, appreciate you answering my multiple questions. You are uh, more than welcome, Ranger. Uh, it's been a little bit of a stressful end to the uh, approach phase of this flight, hasn't it? But uh, we're getting there now. We're, we're just eyeballing this, which is a shame. Uh, Chocolate Chaser, we haven't said the barrel on the approach page. What is it? 214. Yeah, there we go. Nice clear skies tonight. Okay, let's bring ourselves in and we can actually pop that back uh, into, uh, into nav mode now. Uh, Galloway, think about how the real pilot has to think ahead when planning and flying in the dark. <laughs> the di difference is um, ATC is usually on well ahead of the game and they don't give you the wrong runway <laughs> information. What was really difficult of course was the fact that we didn't have not just the wrong runway information but we had no ATC guidance. We were just told you're landing on that runway and you've got to get yourself there. Okay we're going to be nicely below the glide slope now and the profile so that's uh, that's all good and fine. We'll pop lock on as well. So we're at VS minus 1,200 feet. Lock blue. Uh, Barry Golding, <laughs> thank you for your very kind five pound super chat saying it's always entertaining when you come across rogue air traffic control. <laughs> thank you so much. Right, we need to start slowing down as well. So let's activate the uh, manage speed. Lock star. I'm going to go back to Unicom now, actually. Uh, Rome traffic. Alpine 1635 establishing runway 34 left, 18 miles. Slowing to 230 knots. Thank you very much, Ranger and Barry, for your subchats. Very, very much appreciated. So now just slowing down our rate of descent because then we can, uh, from there, hopefully get a nice arrival going in. So let's just pop into thrust idle and open climb, get that airspeed to bleed off, then we can start configuring. 50 miles out, it doesn't matter that we haven't got flaps out or a green dot at that point, we've got plenty of time to lose the speed. The biggest threat, Galgoy, for nighttime flying is um, obviously situational awareness and flat, sorry, speed checks, flaps one, speed checked. Uh, nighttime flying is um, situational awareness and disorientation. Uh, Sound a lot more accurate the scenery in X plane. Really? That can't be right. The scenery here in the sim is absolutely spot on. Uh, Atmina, do I know more about the release of the performance calculator? Hopefully within the next two weeks. Okay, so let's configure and start to capture that glide slope as that's coming in nicely. So we've now got. Um, Alt glide slope blue, cat 3 jewel, autopilot 1 and 2, and 
Let's configure a flaps 2. Speed's checked. Flaps 2. Remember, once we get on the ground, I am going to have a look and see how the scenery looks. We shall uh, bring the sun up for any fans of the Truman Show. <laughs> Speed, glad stop, star. Mr. Project Altitude 3000 is now set. Eight miles to go. So remember, our Mr. Approach is to uh, essentially follow the blue line. Radio altimeter is alive, six and a half mile final. Rome traffic, Alpine 1635, three, correction, six mile final, runway 34 left. Uh, Brian, manual braking today? Yeah, it's a massive runway. I, uh, I'm not concerned in the slightest at running out of room. It's nearly four kilometres long this runway. Good morning, good afternoon and good night, wheels 24-7. That's the one. <laughs> right, five miles. Let's get this thing ready. So, landing gear down. Arm the spoilers. Flaps three. Speed's checked. Flaps three. Ding the cabin and get the lights on. Uh, oh, wrong way. And flaps full. Landing checklist. Cabin is secured. Auto thrust speed. Go around altitude 3000. Set. Ecam memos landing. No blue. I do love it when a big major airport gets a uh, scenery release, as it means that it's another venue that we can fly to more and more. Fucking Chino traffic, Alpine 1 Lima is now established on the localizer. 15 miles, right, let's be more left. Oh, Dark Fury, it sounds like your little ones just woke up, mate. <laughs> Hope you can get it down before they want food. Or the wife yells at you to come on. Come and feed 1, him. Right, 1,000 feet. Let's disconnect the autopilot. Yeah, so as you can see, that's very, very slight crosswind. I wouldn't want it to be... Uh, 11 knots, to be fair, I wouldn't have wanted the opposite runway. Runway 16 made no sense. And to be fair, 3-4 left has been used in the real world at the moment. Right, so that wind's coming from the left. We're slightly off-centre as well. A little bit. Not, not much, but let's just continue to track that centre line ever so slightly. Nose down a little bit as well. Great to see we've got no... Uh, Daft weather to contend with. Five hundred. Means I've got no excuse for a poor landing, really, doesn't it? Four hundred. Very small corrections. Okay, above. focus on the touchdown zone now. Don't worry too much about the pappies or the instruments. Look out the window. Minimum. Continue. 200. Need to keep pushing down. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. Down we go. As spoilers well deployed, we've got reverse screen. And we can take the first taxiway, so s reducing speed now. Reverses are off 70 knots, let's get ourselves off here. And then we'll contact ground.
ladies and gentlemen. The cabin crew will shortly be leaving their seats to perform safety-related duties. However, we ask that you remain seated until the fastened seatbelt sign has been switched off. Portable electronic devices for messaging, calls or internet access may now be used. Please make sure that you take all your personal belongings with you, checking in the seat pocket, underneath the seat, and in the overhead room. Road traffic up by 1635 vacated, runway 34 left. In case anything falls out. Smoking is not permitted until you reach a designated smoking area. On behalf of the captain and the crew, it has been our pleasure looking after you today. Our ground crew will help you complete your EasyJet journey. For the latest news, promotions, flight and destination information, check out our official Facebook page, Twitter or EasyJet app. And let's contact ground. We're currently sat at Alpha Fox. Rome ground, Alpine 1635, vacated onto Alpha Fox. Alpine 1635, welcome to Fiume, continue to send 411 via Bravo, Golf, November Zulu and Hotel. Stand 411, Bravo, Golf, November Zulu, Hotel, Alpine 1635. God, that sounds complicated. Uh, so, where on earth is that? Oh my god, it's miles away. <laughs> uh, right, so we're going to take Bravo, which is to our left. Um, golf, and okay, okay, I know where we're going. Fine. Uh, so, if you want to see what this looks like in uh, in the daylight, just stick with me for a few moments till we've parked. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let me just get on the straight uh, taxiway in Bravo, and then I'll bring the sun up, and we can enjoy the scenery as we taxi to this long uh, this long taxiway. Who's that up there? Probably coming in to uh, here as well. Right, so this is Bravo. Let's have a look at this gorgeous new airport release, shall we? There we go. Uh, Randall 482, you're more than welcome. Thank you for being on board. Nick, you say you never see me use the Atlas Rose anymore. Any reason why not? Um... It, well, it's there for a backup, of course, if you have to go into Cessna mode. Um, but I don't use it anymore for the simple reason that I tend to focus on it if it's there, instead of looking out the window. Current temperature in Rome is 4 degrees, Galgoy. So that is Tango 1. Yeah, we don't want that. Um, I want to follow this all the way around until it turns into Taxiway Golf. Jay Hogg said that he didn't want to fly uh, with us on Vatsim because of the uh, the taxi. Well, the when you've got good handcrafted scenery, the taxi becomes so, so much easier. That's Romeo. We don't want Romeo. I love the way that the taxiways are also patched as well, as though they've done pothole repairs. Clearly not done by Sheffield Council. These look good. Round. Alpine 1 Lima, vacated runway Alpha Fox. Alpine 1 Lima, welcome to Fiume, continue to stand 412 via Bravo Golf, November Zulu and Hotel. Okay, so this is Golf, we now want Bravo, November Golf. Zulu. November Zulu Hotel to stand, uh, can you repeat that again for Alpine 1 Lima? Shutting down engine 2.
Right, let's hope these signs are good. Um, so that's... Papa? Yeah, we don't want that. Wow, this airport's huge. But it looks good. We're going to have to do more flights from here, I think. And, to be fair, Rome Airport is a great airport. And is a stepping stone to so many different places. Right, so November Whiskey, and then November Zulu, which is our second right just coming up. We'll take the drone camera out as well in a moment. And we'll explore this airport properly. So that's November Zulu to stand... 411, did he say? Which is right... is it on the corner? Ah, no, it's not on the corner, it is just here. So we're now going to take Hotel. This is awesome, isn't it? I tell you, actually, I am going to put night time on in a minute, just because I want to see what the night lighting is like. So 411 should be Good our next right. Uh, Gagoy, no, the temperature doesn't change when I set it to daytime. Well, at least I don't think it does. Uh, no, the real temperature in Rome is 4 degrees according to the Meta. So it's got it spot on. Thank you. Here it is. Stand 411. Welcome to Rome. Hey, there's even a, uh, a guy waiting for us. Who knew? I love exploring new airports as well. Get the drone camera out, see if we can find McDonald's. Yeah, so the Metar temperature was plus 4 degrees. And that is exactly what we've got here in the sim, so it it is spot on. Let's move forward a little more, shall we? Uh, the homie, I'm on the experimental version at the moment of the uh, fly by wire mod. Right, don't smash your wing into that thing. <laughs> I, I need a marshal that's actually going to do something, or I fear for my right hand wing. Right. Let me get the uh, parking brake set. We'll cut engine number two. Actually, just before we do that, let's get APU bleed on. Cut engine number two. There we are. APU uh, is uh, is running. See if all signs can come off. And oh, go away. Uh, beacon light can come off as well. We can cut the fuel pumps. Turn off the uh, electric pump. Tax light can come off. And stand by 2000. Right, should we have a little explore then? And see what this new airport looks like. It's the first time I've been here, so as I say, it's always good fun. Let's uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, we got that actually in just the right spot, did we? Perhaps a bit too close. Um, welcome to Rome. Look at this. Now, I said earlier there was a monorail, didn't I? Um, which runs over here to this satellite terminal. wonder if there is actually any traffic on that monorail. That would be interesting. Has anyone uh, got this scenery yet? It came out a few days ago. Um, go to Rome in only 22 minutes. Presumably that's on the, uh, the monorail. Um, as I say, I'm not sure if that's actually modelled or, uh, or not. I did have a couple of people land behind me and follow me in, so yeah, is that uh, that might be Dark Fury that's uh, coming in behind me. It is a massive airport, and these massive airports really do have a lot. Oh wow, look at all the old Italias! Ah, nice. Nice, but also sad at the same time. There they all are, yeah. Uh, what are they, MD-80s, I think? Just announcing we are on 
Uh, Nick, you've got it. You've not seen trains on the track. Let me just speed up the camera for uh, for the drone cam so we can have a look around a little bit. Uh, the homing system specs are on the about page, mate, if you want to check those out. So they, as you would expect now from Minecraft to scenery, really have got everything modelled. Um, really nice. And yeah, we're definitely going to do more flights to and from here as we do with all handcrafted scenery because it's just simply stunning isn't it Ground, Alpine 38 Echo Zulu with you. I'm guessing we don't Alpine have terminal no just for information, we've got, uh, an landing on it would be far too big an airport to put no the internal terminals and decorate all of those up. Sites and we are uh, seven miles uh, behind him, uh, three eight Echo Zulu. Roger that, Alpine 38 Echo Zulu landing is at your discretion. So there it is, Rome, our uh, latest addition to Microsoft Flight Simulator, or well, certainly my latest addition to uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, normally, if the winds are coming in from the other direction, you land on this runway down here, um, and you automatically, you'd have to read the uh, read the charts again, but you automatically are told you obviously vacate, uh, come down here and stop, I think it's somewhere around here, um, and then contact ground, something, uh, something like that. It would be in the charts that uh, are provided by Navigraph, of course. Lovely. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. A later stream tonight than planned, but we managed to get one in. We've not done one since Friday, so we we needed one, didn't we? Thank you so much to everybody who has flown alongside me, to those of you who have uh, donated, super chatted, and contributed towards the upkeep of the channel during the flight today. Thank you so, so much for uh, for your kind support. To our EasyJet Sim Pilot channel members, of course, as always, a huge thank you to you guys for helping me uh, keep the channel going. One final thing before I go, I said I wanted to have a look and see what it looked like in the dark. And it looks to me like a beautifully well lit airport so we will be able to find our way around i particularly like that particular part of the airport that's uh, is that the main monorail station then just here yeah there's obviously a train track oh look at this <laughs> i've not spotted this in the daytime now just imagine if they did have trains fantastic one day, maybe things like Train Simulator and Microsoft Flight Simulator will all link in together. In 20 years' time, you'll have a complete virtual world that will never leave, need to leave our helms. That would be quite sad. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I hope you've had a great Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Thank you for being with me on uh, tonight's flight. And whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a great time. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Good night. Bye-bye.